Hello, hello everyone. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening wherever you are in the world at this moment. My name is Monica Formosa. I'm an independent stepping up demonstrator here in the um, Wide Bay region of Queensland in Australia. Uh, today I'll be doing a video sharing a project that I created for the latest Colour Inspiration Challenge. We've got this gorgeous ombre Christmas tree using the cardstock in the colours of the challenge. And then I've also grabbed the, um, I think it's called the More Dazzling specialty papers that are in the current annual catalogue. It's a specialty paper. Uh, and... Um, to create the background, I've used these two, well, use this this one here. This is a pair of embossing folders that are in the September to December mini catalogue. And all I've done is I've placed my cardstock in it so it runs across and run it through. You can, There's no lines at all to show where the embossing folder starts or ends. Today though, I would thought I would use the circle design just for something a little bit different. And the Marius Trees bundle. Now this comes with a stamp set and coordinating dies. And if you buy both of them, you get a 10% discount. Uh, it has a full image and then a highlight image and a few different a few different um, sentiments in there to you and yours you could easily make that into a a tag use that on a tag um, lots of different images there that you could you could um, use up and the dies it has lots of dies this is this has let me tell you 26 dies in this and what i like to do because there's so many dies in this in this particular bundle um i will when i receive my dies i actually draw around them and there's two reasons one is so that I can see at a glance if there's anything missing. And the other thing is, is that because there's so many packed into this tiny little space, it's often hard to get them back to fit where they should be. So by drawing around them, I know where they've come from and where they need to go back to. Okay. All right. So... Colour Inspiration Challenge. The colours for this challenge are Fresh Freesia, Highland Heather, Gorgeous Grape and Cherry Cobbler. This is a group on Facebook. Uh, you do not need a blog to participate and you do not need to use current product. Uh, so you can just come in and we would prefer you to use Stamping Up product where possible. And if you don't have these colors, you can swap them out for something else, something close. Um, um, yeah, so we're, you know, like we're, we're happy to um, give you alternatives or, or for you to use alternatives if you don't have what you need in your collection. Okay, so um, I've got my... I've got my, um, the bundle here is what we need. I've also got dimensionals um, and I have these lovely loose silver sequins that I've put on the front of my, on the front of my card. Uh, unfortunately, these aren't adhesive backed. So as an alternative to those, let me see. Let me get my little collection of bits and pieces here. Now I can't find them where, where I need them. 
there is a set of adhesive backed sequins and I cannot find them now. That is just, oh, here they are, right at the back. All right, so there's these ones here uh, that you could use. And these are white and these these are sticky on the back. So these are the, the trio pack, adhesive backed sequins trio pack. And the white ones actually do throw a little bit of purple um, if you wanted to use them rather than those that I've got. Um, I will also need a blending brush because we're going to do a little bit of ink blending and I have all four colors of inks. Um, this also, this design is also a great one to use up scraps. And I'll show you why, because you don't need huge amounts of cardstock, except for your Manning layers. Okay, so I've got Cherry Cobbler a layer and a basic white layer that's to go into the center of my card I have got another cherry cobbler layer and a basic white layer that has been embossed and like I said all I did was if I can get this to no it must be no this way this all I did was to um just put it in like so I won't get that line up. Run it in with your um, join going in first. So you run it in through this way. And as you can see, yes, you don't have full circles, but there's no there's no line there where that embossing folder that on for the edges that, that creates, there's no lines created from the edge of the embossing folder is what I'm trying to say. And I did the same for the other one. I just put my cardstock in like so, just to give me a little bit of texture in my background and run it, run it through. Okay. So that's that and that's that. I've done all my die cutting just to little, save a little bit of time. So you need a full, a full um, in the dark and then a medium, a, or a larger one, and then a medium sized one in the Highland Heather and then a smaller one in the Fresh Freesia. But they aren't, this is the largest. So what I've done is the second to largest for my gorgeous grape. And then the next size down for my Highland Heather. And then the next size down again for my Fresh Freesia. And there is a smaller one than that. And that's this little guy here. But I just chose those three because we've just had those lovely ombre colors there that are happening. All right. And then to get my lovely sparkle that's there on my card, I used the More Dazzling Specialty 6x6 papers. And all I did was cut a strip. You just need a strip of this paper you because you don't need a full you don't need a full die cut because we're all we're doing is putting them under here. And to cut these out, um, I actually die cut these on the reverse side. Two reasons. Mainly the mainly one is so that I get a different edge when I put them together. No, nope, this way when I put them together. So there's a different different edge there and then the other the other reason is is that this is quite tricky to die cut um, it does need a little bit of persuasion so you'll need to run it through um, two or three four times just to get it 
and get it cut and by cutting it um, on the reverse side it cuts it e well it's easier so let's get started I will glue glue my all right so that's for my in the inside of my card and I can put that on And glue that in and Tombow is my preferred adhesive but you can use whatever you like now my my card size is a custom card size I think I have mentioned that before so the cherry cobbler layer is um, three eighths of an inch smaller than the measurement of my on two sides than my measurement on the of my card front where's this one i'll show you all right because these are both these are both the same size so i've gone down i've stepped it down oh where's my ruler my little ruler that's all everything is oh. All right, so we've got, oh no, yeah, sorry, three eighths of an inch, which is a centimeter. And then my white layer is a whole half an inch, which is one point, one point two five, one point two centimeters. But you do whatever you like your you like your layers to be. I wanted something to come in to bring your vision into the center of my card. So by pulling that first that cherry cobbler mat layer in, making it that little bit smaller or quite a bit smaller rather than the regular. I think a lot of people use a quarter of an inch or um, or whatever, but I like to make mine just a little bit more so I'm bringing my focus into the center of my card. All right, and then the, the white card is, um, the white layer is half an inch, like I said. So we can glue that on. And that's just bringing in, that is just bringing in the, um, that's just bringing in the cherry cobbler color is what I'm trying to say. All right, so before I glue that onto there though, I need to uh, stamp my sentiment and I have used the one that's in this set, but you can use whatever you like. And I'm going to grab my Stamparatus and unfortunately you can no longer buy, buy this. All right, so this is a photopolymer stamp, so I need my foam mat. And I've got a clear plastic sheet that I'm going to use to get my stamp where I would like it to be. We're going to pick it, put, pick up, pick up our stamp, excuse me. And we're going to get our cherry cobbler ink. Now this is clear plastic. Uh, you can use any type of clear plastic as long as it's clear. And um, you can use that. 
Oh, that's upside down. Dang it. Oh, dang it. Oh. All right, let me wipe that off. That is not gonna work. Let's go this way. I'm guessing you all screamed at me about that. Did I hear you? No. Whoops. This way. Never mind. All right, let me just make sure that that is. I might get some paper towel and just make sure that that's totally dry because that cherry cobbler just about stains everything. All right, so let's go again. Make sure my stamp's dry. We will ink up our stamp. We're going to stamp our clear plastic. Now this fabulous technique I learnt from a lovely lady called Cheryl Miller. All right, so I've stamped my plastic and now I've got my my card and I'm going to place my card between the surface of my Stamparatus and, oh, that's the foam mat actually, and the piece of plastic and get it and just position it where I need it to be. Okay, and then once I've done that and once I'm happy, I'm going to get my magnet and I'm going to um, secure my cardstock. Now, I have a little red sticker on the corner of my sheet. Now, that is just to remind me that that needs to be into the corner of my Stamparatus. Just let me bring this up a little bit more. All right, so that little red dot just reminds me that that needs to be in that corner. And as long as that's in the corner, nice and tight, and nothing else has moved, that's where I will now stamp my sentiment. So I'm going to re-ink and we're going to stamp. There we go. My ink pad is quite juicy, so it's not the clearest, but it's still readable. So I'm happy with that. We're going to wipe that off. And wipe this off because the sooner I can get that off the better because cherry cherry cobbler all the reds and pinks and the deeper purple inks will stain all right so there's that done we can probably add that to the front but I'll just close that first we will bring my card in make sure that that's even I'm just going to turn that over and just hasn't moved no all right so there's that card front now we will go in and make our tree so I might get a piece of scrap paper And what I'm going to do first is just blend a little bit of ink into each layer of my tree. All right, so starting at the top and just applying And this just gives it a little bit more I think my fresh freesia needs re-inking possibly. Okay, there we go. So there's our fresh freesia. I'm using the same blending brush because I'm going to go down to the darker color now. I'm starting line and going darker and I'm bringing in the Highland Heather. Now, what I want to do now is to add a little bit of ink from um from here down down towards the bottom of my tree 
just so that it looks like there's a bit of a shadow. If I turn it around and go this way, it might be a bit easier. Okay, so that's going to give me a little bit of a shadow under there. I might just bring it down a bit more because we'll end up adding we'll end up adding that glimmer, the dazzling paper. There. Okay. It's just a subtle change in colour is all I'm after. And now the gorge is great. And the same thing because this will come down. To that level I'm going to apply ink mainly in this area here oh I think my grape is very juicy but that's okay we, that'll be covered up okay so that's going to go across there like that it is a bit dark but our dazzling paper will cover most of that Right, so there's our ink blending done. Let's take that away. We don't need that anymore. Now I'm going to put all these together. And actually I think glue dots might be, might be the way to go here because because it's, um, where's my take a big tool? Here we go. Whoops. Um, because it's specialty paper, um, this is probably the. Oh no, before I do that, before I do that, I actually want to scrunch these up, scrunch them all up because we're adding. We're adding a little bit of texture. Because I don't know about you, but I've never seen a smooth tree in nature. So let's give these trees a little bit of texture and dimension. Okay, and then this one. You don't need to go all the way up because that will all be covered. So just these lower edges. Okay, all right. There we go. All right. Now we can glue all these together. So I've put my glue dots on here and I'm just allowing just a tiny little bit of glimmer to come through. We don't want too much. The same with this one. We'll add a glue dot. And another glue dot and we will add this and just a teeny tiny little bit of glimmer to poke through so we'll add and then number three the third layer we will probably add three three dots oh that's my husband's phone excuse me That'll teach me to shut my doors properly. And my husband's a little bit deaf and he tends to yell down the phone when he's on a call. He has recently got hearing aids and that's helping. All right, so once again, just a 
teeny tiny little bit of a glimmer underneath all right so there we go can we see that there's just a you don't want anything too much because it will overpower everything and then the third one all right so now what i want to do is add dimensionals here to the back and what i'm going to do is just add dimensionals to the lower edges and minis might be the best for this and i color the back of my dimensionals so that i know if i've removed the backs or not and i might just go do a second row here and then this one we're going to go the whole way so i think i'll use my big ones for this this whole tree will be lifted up i'm using my dimensionals to help stick stick it down I might just put, um, go back to my minis, get right up to in the tip there. All right. Now, I'll leave the backs on that one. What I'm going to do is set this up first. I'll add a little bit of glue here on the tip. And we will remove the backs off here. And we will, oh. Okay. Actually, I might just add a drop of glue to those dimensionals so that I can get that placement right. All right. Okay, we're going to get in there just like that. All right, oh, just glue on my finger. Come on. Right, okay. So the top of my tree is, is down, but I've lifted that edge up to just give it a little bit of dimension okay and now we'll do the same again here we'll add a little bit of glue to the top and the frogs are going we're hoping it's we're going to get some rain we're all hoping for some rain at the moment I know they've had good falls down south I'm hoping we will Hoping we will get some of that today too. All right, I'm going to turn this upside down and go this way. Oh, and I'll add some glue. We'll add some glue because it does make it easier because once those dimensionals grab onto the layer underneath, it can be a bit tricky to um, lift them up again. So by adding that little drop, just allows you a little bit more wriggle time. Okay, so you're going to line that up. Like, oh, line it up, and I've just completely moved it. Come on. Okay. And then just hold it there while it while the glue dries. Okay. So there we have our tree. That is just so pretty. I just love it. Okay. That little bit of sparkle. Okay. And now we're going to... I'm going to remove the backs here. And I will add... I'm going to my take a pick tool. 
just still with me I just got a phone call in then all right we will add a drop of glue to the backs of these all right and I'm going to use my grid paper so if you have I love this Stampin Up grid paper these two dark lines that go vertical and horizontal, you can use them as centering. All right. So I'm going to line up my card. Do I have my tweezers somewhere handy? I don't think so. Line up my card. Kind of get that where you would like it to be. I might just bring it down a little bit so it fits in that spot. And I'm just pretty much eyeballing it. And there's our tree, it's stuck down. All right, there's lots of layers going on in there. Um, you could probably leave some of those out if you really wanted to, that is entirely up to you, especially if you want to post it because postage is quite expensive these days. But if you're hand delivering, I'd say go for it. More layers, the better. All right, but that's me. Okay, I'm going to now put a few of these sequins on. And you know, just random. I'm not quite sure how I, this is how I went on my other card. Okay, I had a bit, a few more on there. Put as many as, or as little as you like. Oh, where's that one? Come on, I think I need to push out. Some more puttying, where's another little one? Uh, I think you get three sizes in this little, little teeny tiny. Let's do that. Three. Is that, a, is that odd? It's kind of like what I had in, in, on my first one. All right. Just a drop of glue. And I'm doing this on my left hand. Oh, so it's... Yeah, I need to, I need more putty. I need to just squeeze a little bit more putty. There's not much there. I don't know whether I can do it here tonight, today. Because you don't need to turn it a lot. You just turn that, turn that little, is it coming? It is coming out. All right, that's better. Come on. Um, but like I said, you could use the that um, this trio, this trio pack of sequins if you didn't want to faff about with gluing. 
like this trio plaque. It's got the white ones. Um, mess around with um, gluing. It'd be, um, and especially if you're making quite a few, you don't want to be spending too much time gluing down sequins. That's it. Dunskies. Right. Okay. So here's the one using the um, the wave folder. This wave design. Okay. And then this one I made today uses the circle. These lovely circles. And. Um, just adds you can use whatever embossing folder you like i just had these they are new and i wanted to try them out and i thought they would look great especially this one it kind of looks a little bit like it's a snow drift not that we have snow here in australia for christmas but i have friends overseas that will probably enjoy getting a card like this so you know can't can't leave them out so that's it. Oops. Today's card. Lots of layers. And then this is the one I created for Colour Inspirations. Um, I will add this video to my blog. And I will add a full supply list in both both here or both here and on my blog if you're interested okay guys all right that's it from me have a great week um and i hope that um you're all doing well and love and hugs to all my lovely friends who are watching and who need it i know there's a few of you going through some tough times at the moment so um you're in my thoughts always all right Bye for now and catch you again soon.